Madrid, the capital of Spain and the second largest city in the EU after Berlin, is a financial and cultural hub located in the center of the Iberian Peninsula. With its renowned museums, delicious cuisine, and year-round sun, it's no wonder Madrid is one of Europe's most popular tourist destinations, attracting over 6 million visitors a year. Welcome to Destination Everywhere with hospitality and travel entrepreneurs Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. Having traveled to over a hundred countries, Todd and Andy bring you unique perspectives with celebrities in the know, hospitality experts, and native connoisseurs to discover must-dos and inspirational destinations to plan your next trip for business or pleasure. So pack your bags and get ready as we bring you Destination Everywhere with Todd and Andy. Welcome everyone, I'm Andy McNeil with Todd Bloodworth, and we are here today talking about one of my favorite cities, what they call the Paris South of Europe, Madrid, absolutely gorgeous, wonderful, gothic, unbelievable, um, just so many things that you can do and experience there. Uh, and it's history. as old as the Stone Age, right, Todd? It's old. You know, uh, the city of Madrid, it was founded in the ninth century. Uh, when Mohammed I of Granada built a, for uh, built a fortress overlooking the Manzanares River. And the old wall of the fortress can actually still be seen, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, then King Philip II, I believe, moved the capital from Toledo to Madrid, not Toledo, Ohio, Toledo, Spain, and um, in 1561, and it became uh, the, the seat of power. And, and Madrid's Palacio Real, it's the largest royal palace in Western Europe. And it's it absolutely has, huge. I know. If you're talking so about big. upgrading, 3,418 rooms. But the royal family lives in uh, Zarzuela Palace, located on the outskirts of the city. But uh, you can do tours of the Palacio Real, which is uh, another just one of the top attractions in the city. Um, it's got the Prada Museum, the Thyssen Bornemisza Museum, and the Museo Reina Sofia. Um, and those three museums are also known as the Golden Triangle of Art. And then according to Earth.org, Madrid is considered one of the most sustainable cities in the world, which is yeah. a wonderful title to have. You know, and it's just one of those walking cities. You know, you just go there and you just walk forever. And the way it's built, it feels really, really grand. It has these huge wide streets and you um, can stop and, you know, have coffee or uh, a quick bite and just just wander and wander for days. It's just one of those very, very special places. So, Todd, who's our first guest today? Well, our first guest is Fiorella Samoas. She is the uh, Director of Sales and Marketing for the Rosewood uh, Villa Magna Hotel. So we're going to be right back and, and talk with Fiorella. All right. Stay tuned, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Destination Everywhere. We have our next guest from the amazing location of Madrid, Spain. Uh, we have Fiorella Samoas, and she is the director of sales and marketing for uh, for sales and marketing for the Rosewood. Now, and I want to be sure I'm saying this correctly, as I would say it if I was in Spain. So you help me out. It's I would say Villa Magna. It is ideal, Villa Magna. That's Villa correct. Magna, the Madrid, uh, the Rosewood Villa Magna. So uh, welcome, Fiorella. How are you today? Thank you very well, Todd. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for allowing us to join you today. Absolutely. Well, we, we appreciate it. And obviously, um, Madrid is one of my favorite cities in the world. It's, it's just a, a great, you know, walkable, um, amazing, friendly city. And I want to, uh, you know, we'll start first with, with the history of, of this hotel. Uh, you guys just finished some renovations in 2021. But prior to that, give us a little bit of the backstory. You know, this hotel set has a, a, um, actually a very interesting story because it's built where the Marquis de Anglada had his palace you know, in the uh, 18th, 1870. Marquis de Anglada had his own palace built here. That's why also we are very privileged. We have a huge garden facing the Castellana Boulevard. 
because that was the, the, the grounds of the palace. So um, later than that, of course, in the, on the 60s, everything was teared down and it was decided to build a hotel, uh, back then a modern property um, that opened in uh, 1972 for the first time as an independent uh, hotel. It was the second um, largest uh, property in the city of Madrid back then and um, to the, to the uh, century we were in or the moments we were living then, uh, a super modern uh, property, state of the art. What neighborhood is next to the hotel? Salamanca, Salamanca district. What is that? What is it known for? Is it uh, the shops, the restaurants, the shops, shops, restaurants, nightlife? Uh, it is it is known for 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 that. It's super safe. You can walk and browse the street without any challenge. You can walk everywhere. All the fashion gastronomic places are walking distance. Everything is like is walking distance from us. And if you want to go to the museums, the beauty of it is you want to go to the museums. Okay, that's fine. You can take a taxi, it's literally three minutes. And you can walk like browse a stroll of 20, 30 minutes. And around the museums, there is not a lot of action. So... Right you really need to get out of that area to come to the place where things happen. And this is it. And Fiorella, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about Madrid and the property itself. And, and we were saying, you know, there were renovations in 2010 uh, to, mm -hmm. to update it. And then these, the, the new renovations, obviously it's been a year now. Uh, when, when in 21 did you reopen after the renovations? We are a baby six months old. Six months. So, yeah. Was it the entire property, the rooms, the meeting space, the, the lobby? Everything, everything. I have to tell you, uh, I was really surprised because I went to Mexico and the COVID happened and I returned to Madrid on a Friday. Madrid closed on a Saturday and um, we were working off for from home as everybody else. Yeah. And um, like literally four months later, all the lobby level was teared down. Wow. You know, it was like coming back, was like, wow, this is now a real construction site, you know? All the top houses, um, which are really the top suites that look like incredible houses in the city of Madrid with breathtaking views, huge terraces, everything teared down was like, wow, this is not the renovation this is major major uh, so so how long was in, how long was the quiet. property how long was the property actually closed all the covid two years two, two years, years uh, uh two years um we were uh, closed of course and then we opened we did the inauguration party on october 23rd and uh, and that's when we kicked off that's when uh, everything started again <laughs> There's nothing like walking into a new space with your old friends, you know, all the people that you know in, in a new a new place. That's great. That's a good feeling. Well, congratulations on the reopening. Thank you. Thank you. And so, so since you've reopened, obviously, you know, we've got to talk restaurants, your dining venues, uh, what new amenities or upgraded amenities the property uh, have, and of course, uh, the sleeping rooms. So what was kind of the inspiration for the new style? the the decor you know we were all the project actually we were you know rosewood has a a a concept of um ultra luxury you now so we bring sense of place into the homes we build in the different cities so what we wanted to do was again make you feel when you come into the hotel make you feel you are coming into a residence, a private residence, not into a hotel. So the concept was done breaking the spaces in order to make everything cozy. We built seven fireplaces in the entire um, lobby level, you know, where, where you, you get into the hotel. And um, it was done by Bar Studios and by other four 
um, designer studios. So we had one designer to do the facade because the building is an historical building that it's very hard to touch. So we got a Spanish, uh, very well-known architect to uh, develop the facade. He did an incredible job because I can tell you, if you look at the hotel at 9 a.m., is a completely different hotel than you look at 6 p.m. because it was done with uh, iron and black and gold and depends on where the light reflects, the facade changes. Absolutely. Another architect we brought in was the, the one for the gardens because we are so, so fortunate, I have to say, to have these huge gardens in the middle of Madrid. So we redesigned the gardens and they did a major work on creating terraces. You you know Madrid very well, Todd, and you know we live on the street for from May until October. So we yeah. had to have the great terraces, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I had many, so m- many cups of coffee sitting outside and uh, on <laughs> patios and terraces. There you go. So we had to have that and we were fortunate enough they were able to do a great job within the different uh, seasons. We have different gardens because of the plants and flowers and everything we have. Then we have um, we had a special architect as well to build the signature restaurant, which is Amos. Um, It is a three star Michelin chef from Cantabrico. Um, He's very good on elevating the Spanish cuisine, but he's still the the cuisine in many aspects of uh, the grandfather and the grandmother. You can still find it there, but he's elevated. And um, so he is uh, managing this new restaurant, uh, Amos. What is his signature dish? Anchovy. Ah, interesting one, right? Wow, you can't imagine. And it's super, super fun because, uh, you know, there are people that don't particularly love anchovy. Right, Like you tell me. (laughs) 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 So when you go to the place, you are a little bit like, oh my God, what is going to... But it's incredible because he makes anchovy butter, but it's like a, a smoked flavor, which is not exactly like an anchovy and is really good, you know? So it is really a, a unique experience uh, how he works the anchovy, I have to say. Well, I, I'll have to try because I'm like you. I'm not a big anchovy fan, but I'm willing to try anything new. So that, that sounds go good. For I'll go, go for, for it. it. I'll go for it next time. <laughs> and and let's, let's talk a little bit about the spa. Um, uh, uh, you know, I hear it's one of one of the best in Madrid now. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's it's just uh, it's just incredible. Uh, we have a, a great spa in a great location, as you know. Um, three treatment rooms, and the, we have a hammam, which is really unique to the city of Madrid. Uh, we do really a very special hammam uh, trained by Turkish therapists. Um, so it is it is a very special experience. And I have to say, everybody talks to me and say, oh, what is your concept? What products do you use? We use great products. We have great concept. But the truth is, we have the best artisan massage. And I, I would dare even to say on the of the planet. And, and trust me, I've been to Asia. So I know, <laughs> I, I think I'm qualified, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it does sound amazing. And you just mentioned business. So we let's just for a second talk about um, uh, meetings and events and uh, a little bit about what makes your property appealing to uh, meeting planners or those people that might be looking for a destination to host a, a, a program. Uh, with your property, what is the ideal size of a group that might be looking to host a program? Uh, we can, I can tell you the ideal size is 75 rooms, um, but we have very extensive function and event space. So we can do up to 500 uh, cocktail style. We have the gardens, 
which is a magnificent scent venue. Um, and we can accept buyouts depending on the season, of course. So you can have the 154 rooms as well. So the space is all super eclectic. This was something we took into consideration when we were doing the study to prepare the, um, the renovation. So you can break up and divide the meeting space. We have the first floor, which we call a junket floor, because as you know, when we have um, uh, product launches and uh, movies and so on launches, they need a little bit of breakouts. So right. the first floor is ready to accommodate that as well. We have the houses on the rooftops, um, which can be, you can have one uh, bedroom house, three bedroom house, five bedroom house. So it is super uh, eclectic. It can go larger or smaller. So, so, so are you, and, and I've got to, I've got to go in and look at these, uh, these, because you're calling them houses on the rooftop, which is kind of an unusual term. So when you when when you say houses, I know you know uh, uh, listeners might be picturing what I'm picturing. So these are are they independent structures on top of the roof? I, I mean, how how is this? Are they apartments? Are they two stories, one story? Yeah, one one story, uh, but definitely when you go in, you go into your incredible beautiful apartment uh, in the city of Madrid. And I, I call it apartment, but it's a huge apartment, right? So more than 300 meters one and the other can wow. go much further than that with incredible terraces of almost 200 square meters each facing Madrid. And really what you feel when you go in is you're not in a hotel, you are in your home in the city of Madrid, you know, it's super uh, welcoming the, 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 the ambience. That's why we call it houses, because it is a house. The feeling is not a suite in a hotel. I, I love that. I, I think that's such a great term. And it's uh, it definitely you know makes your ears perk up a little bit. And I can picture the terraces right now. So it's uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to go take another look at those. And, and, and the last thing I've got, I've got two more questions for you. Actually, three. So you know, as as someone who has obviously fallen in love uh, fallen in love with Madrid, uh, what what are if someone's there for a weekend a night, you know, uh, for a quick trip, what are two things that they absolutely must do when they get there? Walk the city, you know, um, in the in the in the streets surrounding the hotel, you know, get your sneakers and start walking. You know, that will bring the spirit of the city within you. Because as we were talking, you stop to have a coffee, a water, whatever, and you're already making friends. Right. So right. that is really key. And the neighborhoods around here are super safe and super beautiful. And you have everything, shopping, restaurants, well, ev everything within walking distance. And the second thing I have to say are the culinary experiences. If you visit Madrid, you need to try um, the gastronomy. You need to try the tapas in a bar outside. You need to, to try the Tinto de Verano. You know, that is part really of, the, of Madrid and of the culture. Uh, eating, sharing, and, um, and, and enjoying life. I, that's wonderful. I, you know, I, you, you're talking about how friendly everybody is. I feel like I, I just want to go grab a, a, a drink with you right now and just continue the conversation. It's so, it's so wonderful. It. <laughs> one of our listeners would like to follow you guys on one of your social media accounts. Uh, let's do Instagram and Facebook. Uh, can you give us your handles, your fa uh, Instagram and Facebook names? Rosewood Villa Magna. That's easy. Uh, that's it. And you can follow us as well on Las Brasas de Castellana, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, which is one of our restaurants, or um, Amos Restaurant. A-M-O-S? So A-M-A-M-O-S. A-M-O-S Restaurant. Restaurant, yes. That one is, is, is another uh, uh, social that we have where we share experiences from Jesus. And um, here you can find also 
uh, all the offers and um, that we have to visit the city of Madrid. Actually, we are launching now uh, fantastic offers to visit the city over the weekend in, in the summer with um, in, in collaboration with the Corte Inglés, which is like the, I would say, Harrods of, of uh, Madrid, right? And they are literally together with us. So it's like if we were part of the same building. So we said, why don't we share a little bit of shopping with our guests? And um, why don't we give some certificates if you book during the weekend to go shopping? So that's what we are offering. Well, I, I do plan on being there this summer. So I'll be looking for those deals. And uh, we look forward to maybe we'll, uh, we'll actually get to have that, that with maybe some cava on the street. Come over, we take care of you. <laughs> Well, Fiorella, again, thank you so much. And uh, we'll be right back. Thank you. Are you ready to book your hotel for your next company event or family adventure? Let AMI help. We have ongoing relationships with all major hotel chains and access to over 200,000 hotels. Why us? We receive special promotions before they hit the open market, meaning significant cost savings to you. Go to destination-everywhere.com and click the Source Now button and let us get to work for you. Welcome back, everyone. Great interview, Todd. That, that was incredible. So we're going to move into our destination favorites, and these are our five or six favorite things to do when you go to Madrid, things that we've really enjoyed doing. And the first one is vi visiting the Prado Museum. And the Prado Museum is Spain's national museum, and it's considered to have the finest collection of European art from the 12th to the 20th centuries. And it includes works by uh, Rubens, Goya, uh, Velazquez, and of course, El Greco. Yeah, and that's a pretty tall order. Just imagine, just think about all the other wonderful uh, museums we've been to in Europe over the years, Todd, and they're uh, claiming that this one is, is the top. It's very, very grand and has some of the, uh, the, the greatest artists of all time. And then, of course, we talked about how old uh, Spain was and our, our Madrid specifically. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the world's oldest restaurant. And this is Sobrino de Botin. And according to the Guinness Book of World Records, it has never closed and never changed location since opening in 1725. Oh, that's pretty interesting. It is. And for ranks, it is number three on the world's top 10 classic restaurants. Um, they still use the same firewood oven as they did over 300 years ago. I think, think about that. That's pretty insane. The same wood oven 300 years ago they're using today. That's a good, yeah, you're going to see a lot of food on our list here because uh, it's just one of those places to eat. So our next one, one of the things eat. that they're known for is actually yeah. their, their roasted suckling pig. So uh, if you do have the time and, and, and ready for a bite, definitely check it out. But we suggest calling ahead uh, to make sure you can get a spot. Yeah, like I said, um, going to be lots of food in the, this one. You know, the next one is eating tapas uh, on Calle Cava Ba, uh, which is a famous street known for authentic Spanish cuisine, uh, especially tapas. And if you don't know what tapas is, it's small plates. It's small plates of food. And uh, if you see tapas, get it because it's just a lot of fun. It's a very social way of eating as well. Tapas is great because if you want to try everything, but you, yeah. you, know, you don't want to eat big plates, you know, that way you can, you know, just order 10 for the table and just start with that. And if you want more, order more. Wonderful. Yeah, way. absolutely. Now, if you're there on a Sunday, there's a market that you need to go to. It's called the El Rostro Market. It's an open air market. Um, like I said, every Sunday that's been going on for over 400 years straight. Um, it's located right in the historical center of Madrid, so you, you can't miss it. Um, and there's clothes, collectibles, everything under the sun, great food, um, books. You can find uh, ancient books there as well. Um, so it's also surrounded by, you know, restaurants everywhere. So it's a great way to spend the entire Sunday. And another um, great location to go check out is the Puerta del Sol. And it's Madrid's most famous square. Um, and look for a plaque on the ground that says uh, kilometers zero. And, and why is that? <laughs> because this marks the geographical center of Spain and the starting point of the six roads branching out of the city. So oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I, you know what? That's one thing we learned about on our research and, and the times that I've been to Madrid. Uh, I, I was unaware of this. So now I have uh, a goal. When we yeah, go another back. reason to go back. 
And another great thing to do while you're there, something that uh, is very famous in Madrid, a, a great treat, is to have churros and hot chocolate. And uh, there's a great uh, restaurant that is really known for this, and it's San Guinness. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and it's been serving nice. churros and hot chocolate for over 100 years. And they're open. When, when are they closed, I guess, is the, the question. And they the don't. answer is they don't close. They're <laughs> open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, 365 days a year. So you could definitely get your fix. And then uh, another wonderful stop is uh, the Temple of Dibad. And it's an actual Egyptian temple located in Madrid. The temple How was- How get there, Todd? It was a gift from Egypt to Spain <laughs> in the 1960s. And it was uh, a gift for helping save Egypt's Abdul Simbel temples from the flooding of the Aswan Dam. So, uh, and, and it took two years to rebuild the temple stone by stone, which is remarkable. Absolutely. Well, that's amazing. amazing. Well, and I wish we, I had known about that. That's incredible. And, and we'd also be remiss. Uh, and, and the last one is obviously one of the top attractions in Madrid, we talked about it uh, earlier in the show, and that's the uh, the Royal Palace of Madrid, the Palacio Real de Madrid. Yeah. Um, so definitely go check it out. It's the largest uh, royal palace in Europe. So, And one more thing, Todd, uh, that you everyone really needs to do is to go to their version of Central Park. Retiro. Retiro Park. It's uh, a yeah, lovely, open, walkable park. Uh, with many different access points around it. So definitely go check it out. Just, you know, throw out uh, uh, a blanket and hang some, out, bring some food and just hang out and people watch. Absolutely. Yeah, that'll be very, place. You'll, so you'll so that it. said, we are going to uh, take a quick break and come back with our next guest, the CEO of GastroCult, uh, Maria Jose Horda. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to this episode of Destination Everywhere. I'm here with our next guest, Maria Jose Horda. And Maria is the CEO of Gastrocult. And Gastrocult is, is a company that does experiential and uh, food tastings and uh, just wonderful experiences around Spain. And we're going to talk specifically about Madrid. But welcome, Maria. Hi, Todd. How are you? Thank you for having me. Well, we are excited to have you because um, Madrid is obviously one of our favorite cities. Spain in general is just a wonderful country to travel to, and there's so many wonderful places. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, uh, uh, Madrid. But before we get to Madrid, you have a, a pretty interesting background. You've you you started off. You're you're born in Spain. You started off studying engineering and worked for CERN. And for those of you who don't know the acronym CERN, it's the European Center for Nuclear Research. So. Tell us a little bit about that and how you evolved into what you're currently doing. Okay. So um, I think it's a very funny story how I got to CERN, which is the first step. I was at university. I went out one night with my sister and then she really liked this guy. You know, we were in a bar in Spain and she said, I need to talk to this guy, you know, and he was with another guy. And he said, I talked to him and you talked to his friends. And I was like, okay, whatever. So we went up to them. I was talking to this other guy and he was working at CERN and he was saying, you know, I work at this European center. And then I thought, wow, this guy must be like super intelligent. And he said, you know, you should apply, you know, give me your email and I give you uh, and I give you, you know, a shout when when the application form is due. So three years later, he wrote me an email and I prepared the application form. I did all my best. You know, I put everything I had done. I was so like dreaming to go to this place. And I was selected. So um, I was, uh, I just just thought, whatever you, you dream of something, it happens. So I went to CERN. CERN is a very international place. It's very good, but it's very like um, international functionnaire. I don't know if you know what it is. It's like you work for the state. So there is not so much happening. There is no like business. There is no like how the money comes from. So I really wanted to go into like private companies. So from there, I jumped into banking because when you leave, CERN is at in Geneva and Geneva is about chocolate and banking. This, this is what it's about, right? <laughs> so um, all my friends were working in banking and they were like, you should be an analyst, you know? And they were so passionate about the world, the world in banking. So I just applied and I jumped to banking, which was very operational. It was very nice. I was there for many, many years. 
and then what happened to me is at one point I come back, I came back to Spain and I had this small flat. It was around 40 square meters and I started renting it out to like visitors. And it was like around six, seven years ago. And I wanted to be number one in booking.com. Do you know this? this yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I said, I want to be number 10. I want to be the first, like the best flat ever in Spain. So I started, it became very crazy. I started doing interviews to customers. I was just like putting five pillows, different, like whatever. So I started doing a lot of interviews and people were asking about food. They were like, yeah, even if I had a lot of things in the apartment, like it was very comfortable about the wet, like the temperatures. They were, people were like, where can I eat? What is the, the best like typical food in here? What is the best place? So what is this gastronomy coming from? And then at one point I thought there's something in here. Like there is 10 questions and people only develop the one that is about gastronomy and food. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I live many years like outside of Spain. So I, loved, I I went in New York. I went to like the UK. I, I knew different cultures and places. And I realized food is a very important, you know, uh, cultural thing like people like talk and socialize around food they define our you know where we come from who has has invaded our country in Spain we have many invasions in the past and the food ingredients you use they're very connected to who you are so I realized it was a uh, like something very exciting so I wanted to create a startup I wanted to create a new company and food international people were, you know, my target. So I gave it a little thought and then GastroCult was uh, born, which is gastronomy and culture. So uh, that was so, for, so let's talk about GastroCult. So what is the, the premise of your business? What, what okay. exactly, if, if, if I'm looking up GastroCult um, and, and I look at your website, what, what is it going to tell me about your business? What do you do exactly? Okay, so we do private tours. It could be like uh, one day or it could be an excursion out of Madrid or in Spain, or it could be several days. That's what we do the most. Like people come to Spain and they want to see, you know, you want to see different things when you want to see Madrid, Barcelona, Sevilla, you want to go to Bilbao and do the best cooking. So people want to go around Spain and they need, they need, they, they, they decide to do things that are very connected to culture and gastronomy. And that's what we do. We have 300 partners. We're connected to the best of Spain and we listen to the customers. We say, so, you know, the age is the, is the first time in Spain. Mm -hmm. What kind of things you're interested in? If it is art, if it is museums, if it is, you know, if it is just relaxing, but you want to, you know, get to know the culture. Mm -hmm. So um, we center around that. It's like private tours that are around a lot of gastronomy and culture on your way. It could be like easy going or. Do you do uh, like corporate groups as well as uh, a smaller, intimate uh, transit we travelers? Do. Yes, we do corporate groups. Actually, this week we have, you know, Real Madrid. Oh, yes. Real Madrid in Spain. Uh, they have like um, like every every six months, they have like a campus where there is a lot of American boys and, and girls coming to play football here. And they bring their families along. So it's like 400 people. And we give service to this group, and we. I've actually had friends that have that have done that. That's that's wonderful. That's great. Oh yeah! Wow! Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And we do like the paella cooking. They get very excited, you know, the apron on, like yeah. like chopping the thing. There's like flamenco on the background, and they they have a lot of fun. These tapas, and it's our best experience. The ones with the Real Madrid families is top. If someone contacted you and they were looking for um, to do a, a gastro experience in Madrid for four people to six people. What's something that, that comes to mind that would be just unforgettable? Okay. Um, so we, we work with hotels and restaurants, but we work with a lot of chefs and, in, and like uh, independent like providers of unique things. And one thing we have is, um, is a very normal, but it's, it's amazing. It's a picnic, okay, in a green park at sunset so they come and they mount this table 
the decoration is you want to cry. So either you, you know, if it is your anniversary or if it is your birthday or if it is just a group of friends, they just put your names, they put flowers, they, they really choose the colors and everything depending on like on the uh, station, a station or how you call this, the, um, the, the season of the year. Mm -hmm. And so they serve the food and they put like full of Spanish food and they go to the best places. So you have really tasty food. And you even you, you you take your shoes off, you sit on the on the grass around a table, and the these two people serving for you, they mount everything and then they unmount everything and they they pick it up. They have to ask for permission to the city hall, so to do right. this. And you sit it down. And if you have kids, they like playing around and it's really like easy going thing and it's very relaxed. We do this when we have like the whole day, we have people that want to do like cultural to tours mm -hmm. then at lunch we say okay now we relax we're going to create this experience i love that i think that's such a great idea it is very nice and the other one we combine it with is you know we take rolls royce that are you know rooftop uh less yes, less. yes. The convertible? And, and we take historians that go in the car with one or two people and very slow like really really like I don't know, 10 miles per hour, they're running around the streets of Madrid, like, the, and they are talking about the history and the art, and it takes an hour, and, and it's so passionate, everybody that goes in the car, they go, I wish my family was here, I want, I wish my, everybody wants to, like, bring people just to go around, and you go with the Rolls Royce around, like, the 50s is, like, really nice, and then, and then you go for the picnic at the uh, park. So that sounds really wonderful. Good. That that really does. It's such a great way to see the city where you're not in large crowds and you get that one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you know, uh, really yeah. expertise from a historian. When you have <laughs> downtime and you you get to just enjoy the city yourself, what what neighborhoods do you like, or or do you have a favorite restaurant that you like to go to uh, and and get some great food? Okay, so um, recently, like some months ago, they opened a new place called Saddle. S A D D L E, and I think it's the best restaurant I've ever been. Like they have like really high ceilings, and the service is amazing. Like really amazing. Like very educated, very like on time. Like because you know not, by now we have tried like hundreds and thousands of right. restaurants. Right. Just delay. And this was very very impressive. Like even the way they serve, you know, even the butter. They bring you some some warm bread, and the way they cut the butter like around is amazing. It's like a spectacle. So, I really what is like what's the cuisine? The cuisine is Mediterranean. You have like okay. Spanish food and Mediterranean, and it's very like creative, innovative. But they have really like like tasty and soft meats. They have like nice fish and. They have everything. Even if you're vegetarian, they have amazing dishes. Like even if there is like, I don't know, artichokes, you wouldn't even try at home. And you eat them there and it's like melting in your mouth, right? So it's an amazing that. place. I love it. That's a bit pricey because it's uh, two Michelin stars. So the menu is around $190. But you can go also to like also small places that, for example, I like Café Comercial, like commercial café is called, it's a very mm. strange name, but it's, it's very old from the 19th century. And you used to have uh, literates and like poets going to these places to write their poems. So it's very historical. At one point, like 10 years ago, they closed down because uh, the owners decided to like, like they were very old and they decided to close it down. And there were so many people like with post-its on the, on the doors just saying, right. please open again. My grandfather used to have breakfast in here. I want this place to be open again. So it has a lot of history and, and the food is amazing. So you can go there just for, uh, for breakfast. So you can, they have amazing pancakes, for example, you can have with a cup of coffee or you can have lunch and dinner. They have a small terrace, but the, the strongest thing is like inside, like the, and then um, I say there is um, a small little cafe. I mean, I, I don't think if this would be something super public, but a little cafe called Cafe de la Luz, which is the light cafe, which is also very old. And they, they this is called the most romantic, romantic cafe in Madrid. And you just have a cup of tea, you have a coffee, maybe some pastries, but it's just, it's just how it's decorated. It looks right. like you're in a house in the 18th century, right? Like the tables, the, the sofas. It's very small. Maybe you have capacity for 20 people. 
but it is a nice place just to do a stopover and enjoy a coffee and then continue. And it's, it's really romantic. Really. So we love those hidden gems. See, we like to call those the hidden gems of a city. This, you have to be a local to really kind of know where some of these places are. And I think that's what a lot of people look for when they start, you know, traveling internationally. And um, and and we're, we're talking about Madrid here, but you service uh, basically the entire country of Spain, correct? Correct. Yes. So if someone wants to go to, you know, Canary Islands or Mallorca or Ibiza, we also have things in there. We have Galicia, which is, you know, top corner is the closest point to America. And in there, we also have very nice things. You have Finisterre, which means in Latin, finis is the end, terre. And it used to be like people used to believe it was the end of the world. Finisterre yeah. is like this, this corner of Spain where there's nothing behind. And people call it like the end of the world. And it's funny, right? Because so, of course it's not. Well, fantastic. Well, Maria, thank you so much for your time today. We we yeah, really look you. forward. I, I hope we get to, to get out to Madrid or really anywhere in Spain. Yeah, you do. Please call me. I take we you absolutely will. Okay. And, um, you know, thank you for your time. Your insight was very helpful. So, okay. and again, to reach out to Maria, uh, you can contact her at gastroandcult.com. So that's G-A-S-T-R-O-A-N-D-C-U-L-T.com. So again, thank you, Maria. And to our listeners, we'll be right back. Okay. Bye-bye, Todd. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everyone, to Destination Everywhere. I'm Andy McNeil, along here with Todd Ludward. Todd, great interview with Maria. Uh, God, what a great lady. What's great, you know, I, I I love her business model where she, you know, she'll obviously set up amazing experiences, you know, yeah. within Madrid, but, uh, it, you know, she acts um, or, or she also executes meetings all around Spain. So um, if you do have time in Madrid and then want to go out and see something else, whether it's in Barcelona or, or Malaga or San Sebastian uh, or Toledo, definitely, you know, utilize the time and, and get the most out of a trip to Spain in general. But um uh, and and the gastro uh, the gastro scene is yeah is it's just the food well. the food is incredible you know bring an extra pair of sneakers and maybe uh, some pretty loose clothes because you're going to be walking a lot and you're going to be eating a lot when you go to Madrid <laughs> lots uh, of elastic yeah our our times there have been very very special uh, and it's just one of those cities that's easy to visit and fun to visit and one that you'll uh, leave uh, feeling very very enriched so. Head to Madrid. So that that wraps us up for our time here today. Um, we would also like to thank our team here. We have our copywriters, Luis Pedraza and Kim Jordan, Annie Fernandez, our creative director, Russia McNeely and Luis Pedraza, our podcast producers, and the Lightship Studio team. So please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the show on your preferred destination or on your preferred podcast app or by going to destinationeverywhere.com. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you next time on Destination Everywhere. Safe travels. You've just tuned in to another episode of Destination Everywhere with travel and hospitality entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. To access the show notes and other helpful resources, visit destination-everywhere.com. Join us again next week for another bucket list filled show as we feature another travel worthy destination. Until next time, travel well and be safe out there.